Hey everybody, this is Ben Scott, sous chef at the Resort of Paws Up here in beautiful Greeno, Montana. Today we're going to be doing a little uh, live fire grilling demo here. Um, so we got a couple things going on today. Um, we're going to be uh, cooking this uh, beautiful dry aged 28 day bison ribeye straight in the coals here. Um, we're going to make a little barbecue rub, um, house barbecue rub, and then we're also going to complete the dish um, with the sauce here, a little bit of grilled spring um, alliums, and then a uh, house romesco sauce as well. Um, so to start the day off here, we're going to fill the rub together. Um, so going down the ingredients list here, we're going to start with a little bit of brown sugar, granulated sugar, dash of cayenne pepper, a little bit of salt, fresh cracked black pepper. This is our uh, house-made dried chili powder. Smoked paprika. A little bit of toasted coriander. This is some ground cumin. Garlic powder. And then our little secret ingredient here today is some um, house espresso powder. It goes great with the bison. So we're gonna mix this up real quick. Okay, now we're gonna go very heavy on the seasoning here. Uh, we are cooking straight in the coals today, so we want this, um, the sugars and all the mesquite in the fire to really give us some nice caramelization here. So we're gonna go very heavy on the seasoning. The seasoning we use um, for all sorts of stuff at the resort, um, grilling steaks, uh, we'll rub it on our brisket, some of our smoked ribs, it's quite versatile. You notice we're using a thicker cut of steak. Um, I'd recommend going about an inch, inch and a half um, for whatever protein you're doing. We're using bison today, um, but again, beef works great as well. Um, the reason why we're using a thicker cut is because this is going directly in the coals. So a thinner cut's gonna um, cook very quickly. And we want this to be a nice, rare, medium rare finished product, okay? So we're just gonna go straight in the coals here. Um, all this firewood is a combination of about 50% um, hardwood found on property here from naturally fallen trees, and then about 50% of uh, mesquite um, wood here. You can see the, the darker wood here is the mesquite. Um, classic barbecue hardwood, um, it's big in Texas. We use it here all the time. It's great, great tasting wood, and what it's gonna do is almost season um, the protein as well. So we're gonna go straight in there. So as that's cooking here, I'm gonna introduce you to my counterpart here, Mr. Alex Dang, um, uh, one of the restaurant managers here. Sure. Alex, wanna take it away? Yeah, of course, thanks, Benji. Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, hey, Chef, wouldn't you love to drink something while that is cooking? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I got a couple pairings here. We're gonna pair that steak later with our friends, uh, Chapelet Pritchard Hill Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, first off, I wanna start off with a nice champagne, um, a little Vouve Cacroix. So champagne is a perfect aperitivo. Um, aperitivo is pretty much your your beverage before dinner. Um, between Italians call it between work and dinner. What also you want to we call it happy hour. Um, and what it does is that it prepares you for the meal ahead. So this champagne is gonna be very dry. Has a lot of citrus notes to it. Um, and what it does, it really just kind of opens up your stomach getting ready for that steak or whatever, you know, three course, four course meal, whatever you're all doing at home. Um, but cooking and then with a nice glass of champagne or wine next to you, um, that's just fun, right? So, and then any sparkling that's on the drier side will work very well. Um, a little trick if you wanna do, you can also make a champagne cocktail. If you have sugar cubes at home and if your bar, your home bar has a little Angostura bitters, you just drop the little sugar cube in there before you pour the, the champagne and you you douse the sugar cube with the bitters and you just pour the champagne on top and what it does is that sugar opens up and the bitterness opens up um, and that's not another belief in the aperitivos that bitterness kind of makes you salivate for food um, and that's a big um, Italian culture and belief too so um, we'll start with the wine here Benji thank you sir yeah. a little uh, air cheers air cheers <laughs> and Benji's gonna finish his steak Okay, so steak's going, we're gonna probably go about four or five minutes. Um, very nice hard sear down. Like I said, we're looking to really char the outside. This is kind of 
um, atypical to um, you know your traditional uh, normal fire we really want to uh, develop a very very hard sear um, on that uh, face side down there um, so we got some vegetables over here we're gonna be pairing um, this steak with a um, house made romesco sauce um, we've been playing with variations of this um, over the last few seasons here at the resort um, it's uh, traditionally a northern um, Spanish condiment it goes well with all sorts of um, products we use it for with fish, it goes great with vegetables, obviously um, beef, bison, chicken, it, it, it's all fair game. Um, classically paired with some spring onions, we're gonna char those uh, to finish the plate off at the end tonight. So what we're gonna do here is um, we're gonna throw these uh, veggies right in the fire, we're gonna char those up to finish our, our sauce tonight. So we've got some Roma tomatoes, um, some red bell peppers, uh, a few jalapenos to kick it up the spice level a little bit. And obviously some um, yellow onions. We're gonna let these char and so get on the outside, they're gonna look a little uh, overdone, a little bit burnt, but they're actually roasting on the inside. It's gonna be this nice, fluffy, um, delicious, tender inside. Check on our steak here. You can see it just looks gorgeous here. So we got that nice charred outside. Again, it's gonna be nice, beautiful, medium rare on the inside. This uh, steak is a uh, 28 day, 28 day um, dry age on it. Uh, it's a uh, dry age between about uh, 34 to 38 degrees um, and our cooler controlled. Um, we're using a bison ribeye today, like I said. Um, reason we're using a ribeye cut instead of um, like a New York strip or a tenderloin is due to the fat content. Um, so what we're looking for high fat, um, this steak is going to be excellent over this high heat cookery. Again, um, as compared to like a tenderloin, um, a little leaner cut, uh, it tends to dry out a little bit more in this sort of um, cookery. So we're looking for that again, that nice high fat. Veggies are starting to roast up. Hey Benji, could yes, sir. you dry age in your house if you wanted to? You could, you could. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a controlled atmosphere. Um, so you, a lot of times we're looking for a dry age room. Uh, and again, it's uh, right around 34 to 38 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So we're looking to dry age um, some beef in. And what this does, what dry aging does is, um, in a few words, it's concentrating a flavor. So the longer you go with the dry age, the more it's, uh, the flavor is being concentrated in the meat. Um, it almost has uh, like a blue cheesy kind of funkiness, uh, fermented taste to it, um, the longer you go. Uh, this product works awesome at 28 days, um, but we've done on property longer days, a few months, uh, depending on what the cut of meat is and also the application. I'm gonna get a cast iron uh, going right now. We're gonna, the last element to the dish tonight is gonna be a little quick uh, smashed roasted potato. So as the steak's finishing up here, get this pan nice and hot. It's gonna be delicious. It's just about there. So, uh, talking about making the romesco sauce. So, after these veggies get a nice char on the grill, um, they then get cooled down. Uh, depending on how far they get charred, we'll scrape off just a little bit of a super, super charred ends. Um, that's all gonna go into a blender. Um, from there, we uh, toast some almonds and then add a spice mixture of some um, garlic, a um, little bit of cumin, and then um, some sherry vinegar as well. That all gets blended up and what we're looking at is a final product here is this beautiful bright orange um, romesco sauce right here as you can see it's just gorgeous and again it goes well with, with pretty much anything. Um, traditionally uh, some romesco is going to have some day-old bread fold it into the final product. We actually leave that out with our recipe just because um, we want to keep it gluten-free. The sauce is vegan. Um, you can make it at home. Extremely easy. It's again goes well with, with just about everything.
So what we're gonna do now is pull out the steak. It's feeling rare, and what we're gonna do is the importance of uh, resting our proteins. So we're gonna let this rest for just a few minutes here. Like I said, you can give this a feel. It's just beautiful, absolutely great. We're gonna let this finish cooking. So we're about rare right now. And as I cook the potatoes here, we're gonna rest ourselves up to a nice medium rare. So we've just gently roasted these potatoes here. We're gonna do just a, just a nice soft smash with our hand. A little bit of canola oil. So we'll go right into our pan here. Then we're just gonna do a very quick two to three minute very high heat sear on these potatoes, get some nice golden color on them as this steak is resting. We're also going to throw in some spring onion into the mix, classic pairing with some romesco here. And we're just going to fire these right, right in the coals as well. It's just a great looking little bounty of food right here. Um, you know, there's no need for a uh, grill grate when you don't need it. This is just what we love to do here. How long would you let the steak rest? We're going to let this rest for about four to five minutes. Um, it's going to uh, go up in temperature about Five de or uh, one degree every every minute or so. So we're looking for a nice, nice medium rare on here. Alex, you want to talk about the our last wine as yeah, we're yeah. resting here? Sure. So I brought um, the wine from our friends from Chapelet, Dom and Amy. Um, this is their Pritchard Hill Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, and then I always like to go with the classic pairing of steak with cab. Um, but there really is no set rule of how you pair wine. Um, but however, I like to pair this because this has notes of high tannins, very full body. It's gonna hold on to that, that fat. It's gonna compare that very well. And that fat in that steak is gonna bring out a lot of the spices um, in the wine as well too. So you're gonna have, what, was, what you have in there, a little espresso in there as well, yes, in that sir. rub. So this does finish with a little bit of um, espresso at the end too. So that's gonna kind of bring out that espresso rub in the barbecue rub. Um, and I did open this for about 30 minutes before um, we, we did pour it because that's gonna, you know, change the wine over a couple, you know, over time there because the way it reacts to the air. And if you're looking to pair something with the champagne, um, my rule of life is uh, birds and bubbles. Fried chicken and champagne um, is one of the best pairings in the world. And um, that's a sneak peek to something we'll be doing um, later in the week, next week, or in two weeks or so. So um, right here, classic Cabernet Sauvignon and ribeye. It's usually what I go to when we do steaks and when I ask about any wine pairings at the restaurants or anything. So cheers, man. Thank you. All right, so let's finish the plate here. So I just pulled off the charred onions. Like I said, again, it's got some of that mesquite on there. It's gonna be a great little char flavor to the end result of the dish. So very simply here, you're gonna plate up. We're gonna take some of our romesco. Beautiful contrast from the stainless color here. I'm gonna slice our steaks. We're gonna go right down the bone here. Present the bone. Nice beautiful steak. Grab our potatoes. We're just gonna finish with a little bit of scallion right on top. That right here, 
It's a little dry-aged bison ribeye cooked in the open coals here at the Resort of Paws up in Montana.